Good morning everyone, I'm Terje Rølvog and today I want to demonstrate how to apply a digital twin for structural health monitoring. There seems to be a lot of fuss about digital twins. What is a digital twin and what the purpose of a digital twin? In this example the purpose is to monitor the crane in real life and to use the digital twin to extract extra digital sensor data, uh, giving information about the structural health of the crane. For example, you can output strain time histories, stresses, loads, and lots of other data from both the physical and the digital twin. Step one in making a digital twin is to create a CAD model. We received a CAD model from uh, Palfinger and we meshed it in NX. We uh, used 25 structural parts uh, in order to represent the structures in the crane. We meshed each of them with head and shell elements and we used RB2s and RB3s to connect the solid nodes to the joint nodes. The Gunerus vessel was represented by a CAD model and imported later in FEDEM for display purposes. The complete assembly FEM had like 3.6 million degrees of freedom. The next step was to import the 25 FEM models from NX Nastron to FEDEM. There we added joints of different types in order to enable the rigid body motion between the individual parts. Uh, then we added actual springs and dampers to represent hydraulic cylinders. We added functions to describe nonlinear properties and also to clean the sensor data. Then we added strain gauges in all hotspots in order to output real-time stress histories and strain histories. And the hotspots were identified with something called virtual brittle lacquer that identifies where the crack will start. Then we added sensors uh, in order to give inputs to the control system that also were modeled in, the, uh, in uh, FEDEM. Then we imported the Gunerus vessel, a CAD model for visualization of wave-induced motions. And then we finally modeled the sea environment with the uh, waves from uh, weather forecasts and uh, the current growth, etc. To ensure that the digital twin is correct, we did some initial testing. And in this example, we have the crane in the extended position and there is an iPhone connected at the end with the sensor log app, which is measuring vibrations at 100 Hz. Uh, then we initiated some vibrations, we did an FFT analysis, and we identified the physical first mode to be 0 0.74 Hz. And then we did some uh, analysis of model analysis of the digital twin model in extended position and we matched very well with an eigen frequency of 0 0.73 hertz. Then we did the same test in the stowed position and as you can see uh, the first eigen frequency is 1.6 hertz and we had a perfect match with the physical and digital twin. Then we had a very close match uh, with the second mode, it was 5.8 versus 5.6 Hz. And by using these two simple tests, we have validated the mass and stiffness distribution of the crane in the most extreme positions. Then we had to tune the damping of the crane model in extended and stowed positions. Uh, we used the same tests uh, and uh, then we calculated the logarithmic decrement and damping ratio for both the extended and then the stowed position. After that we could use the mass and stiffness proportional damping in FEDEM and tune the alpha 1 and alpha 2 parameters which I'm showing in a separate video and in that way we could get a very precise uh, description of the damping of the crane in the most extreme positions and in between. The main purpose of the digital twin crane model was to enable structural health monitoring of the crane during real physical operations. And it was therefore of extreme importance that the simulation model could run as fast as the crane could move. And here we can see Arve, he's running the crane, and we can start the simulation. And what you can notice is that the simulation model 
uh, runs almost twice as fast as the physical crane, even though the FEM, FEM model has originally 3.6 million degrees of freedom. That's because we are using different type of model reduction techniques on the crane model. And the sampling frequency is 100 Hz to enable uh, simulations of the physical operations offshore we instrumented the crane and the ship with various type of sensors and then we used an IOT gateway to send the data to a cloud solution provided by a Norwegian company called Tellu. Uh, they made a Grafana dashboard for the Arrowhead Tools project and here we can see how the Gunerus ship has been moving the last week or so and we can also display various type of sensor data for selected periods. The physical sensors we are using to do structural health monitoring on the crane is the IMU, the ship IMU, which gives us information about the wave-induced motions that the ship is imposing on the crane, which obviously has a structural impact on the crane. Then we have a boom length monitoring sensor, uh, which is sensing the overall boom length, which we have to recalculate to the individual cylindrical strokes. Then we have two tilt angle sensors, one on the main and one on the outer boom of the crane. Then we have an encoder on the crane slewing axis, and we have a pressure sensor on the hydraulic system to detect when the crane is starting to operate. Then this, uh, these physical sensor data are transferred to the IoT dashboard via the gateway using the ISO STEP standard. And then uh, we use some Python scripts to clean the data uh, and to simulate the crane or and the ship motions. So here you see both a visualization of uh, the hydrodynamics and the crane motion on the crane. So by using the Arrowhead Tools framework, we were able to do the following. First, the crane uh, is in operation the sensor data is sent via the IoT gateway to the Arrowhead Tools dashboard using the ISO standard data protocols. Then uh, Python scripts are collecting these data and they also clean the data, applying different type of analytics. And then these are fed into the FedEM software, which then can simulate the same operation. In this example, these are pre-computed, so this crane is actually running faster than the physical crane, which is not the real case. Uh, but this shows the data flow and how it works. Uh, we can't do the full stress analysis of the complete crane real-time, but that can be performed at uh, critical time incidents detected by uh, an event trigger. So what's the purpose of the digital twin? Well, we have seen that the digital twin in this example complement the data that you get from physical sensors. So the simulation here can run real time and you can output applied loads, displacements, forces in joints and components, structural deformations and uh, s uh, outputs from strain gauges. We can plot reaction forces and moments between the crane and the ship. We can plot velocities and accelerations on every point or super node on the crane. We can also visualize wave-induced ship motions. And we can also display control and hydraulic system variables that are not available from the physical asset. Uh, we can't do it real-time, but we can offline show strains, stresses and displacements in all nodes. That means the complete stress distribution as shown on the image to the left. And this is the purpose of a digital twin, to provide additional data that you are not physically measuring in order to save time and costs. Here you see some curves from the simulation um, plotted inside FEDEM. The next step is to send these data using the Arrowhead Tools framework back to the Grafana dashboard. And then you can watch simultaneously data from the physical asset and the digital model. And that's the purpose, to enable or provide extra data and information about the structural health using a digital model and data which you are not physically measuring. 
A special purpose for this digital twin model is to enable predictive maintenance of the crane. And that's why we have uh, developed a virtual brittle lacquer that identified the hotspots on the crane. And we then uh, put it, uh, digital uh, strain gauges on those hotspots. And then we can calculate and visualize in the cloud uh, real time, the strain time and stress time histories and calculate the accumulated damage for predictive maintenance. Here you see the strain gauges located at the identified hotspots and here you see the strain time histories from the strain gauges which we then will send to the cloud. The crane has a very non-linear behavior due to large rotations and displacements and variations in payload. And here you can see those variations causing changes in eigenfrequencies. And we can use this information to detect uh, payloads using in different inverse methods. And we can also use this information to identify damage on the crane structure or components. And hopefully at the end of the Arrowhead Tools project, we have found methods and tools to reach our final goal to replace physical with digital inspections based on IoT and digital twin solutions for structural health monitoring. Let's see and stay tuned. See you again.